So, yeah, getting right into this thing, how would you describe what it is that you do? You know, what is Earth and I all about? So I would say the foundation is this unity between spirituality and humanity. I really strive to kind of create a balance of the spiritual exploration along with making things digestible to anybody who's just curious about spirituality. It really is a community. That's my main goal with the Earth and I is kind of building a community of you know, spiritual explorers, curious beings, all different walks of life where we can unify on these like divine universal codes that we all experience. Mm, that's awesome. Community. Yeah, that's very important. That's something that people say they are, because I asked the same question to everybody, the first question. And a lot of people that I speak to, they say the same thing, just create a community. And I feel as though that is extremely, extremely important in today's world. Because why would you say that's important? Let me ask you that one. Why is building a community of like-minded individuals important for you? I would say in my life, the community was built for me. And I felt like I had to fit into the community. Yeah, yeah. And with the earth and I, I want the community to fill it fit the beings instead. And I think that's something that we kind of lack. Like we, I believe many of us have kind of experienced where it's like we have to fit into an already established community. Yeah, I'm striving to kind of build something that's continually evolving, continually, you know, fitting the feet of whoever's looking to join. And it is super important to have, you know, other people around you that feel the same way, that wander about the same things. But it's really important as we begin having this awakening on the planet that we realize that we don't have to change certain fundamental things about ourselves in order to be in a community or have a group of friends, however that may show up for somebody. And it's really ran deep for me because I felt like a lot of my life, I was trying so hard to fit into these boxes to get acceptance and to be validated by other people. And that is human nature. But I realize that we don't have to do anything specific to receive those things. And that's really what I want to spend my life giving to people and showing people. And it's being shown to me as well. So that's really a beautiful thing that I've discovered. And I'm continually learning how I can become more authentic in that. It's definitely beautiful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. find the others or maybe yeah. as you said the others will find you <laughs> yes <laughs> that's yeah that's the beautiful part of it too you begin attracting that like attracts like exactly yes. yeah truly yeah and in the times that we are in the wonderful times that we are in we're not constrained to our locality we can branch out and tap in with people all over the world it's quite wondrous you know it's um we take it for granted i say this a lot i apologize if anybody listens and hears me say it all the time <laughs> we take it for granted this technology that we have but it's truly magical like what we're doing right now what the listener is doing right now what is this this is magic right it's we don't think it is because it's in our pockets at all times but if you brought this back 50 years ago to somebody and showed them they'd be like what what is the sorcery that you have brought upon me, <laughs> right? But yeah. truly magical times we are in. And being able to build a community in these magical times, I think is a very um, important aspect of being able to utilize the technology for sure. Yeah, find the others. Yeah. Um, so how would we describe what the community is about? What do you really talk about how would you get into this spirituality you know why are we doing this in the first place what uh, how do i put this what is what are the classical communities not doing for you that you need to create in your community i guess maybe it's a better way to ask yeah that's a good question i would say i really felt like 
it wasn't a space that I could be authentic in. And yeah, my parents would always tell me, you know, if you don't like the way somebody's doing something, you need to do it yourself. And when I realized that I went to university, um, you know, I was kind of doing everything that like we're conditioned to do. And um, when I realized kind of what I felt was happening, it just it really made me sad and honestly very scared because I felt like everyone was kind of washing away what made them different mm. in order to fill these, you know, needs that we all have. And I think that it's very much about survival mode. That is what a lot of, um, you know, ideas have come back to for me is that we're really being manipulated into, you know, our lower frequencies and yeah. just being dominated by that really, the really limited experience in 3D and that nothing on the mainstream really like pushes the surface, you know, pushes the ceiling as much as, you know, we do see these new creations, like the creation of technology. And when you read these stories about these people, they completely like paved their own path. You know, many dropped out of school, many, you know, um, got fired from a job, whatever it may be. And I felt like there is really something powerful when you're willing to wander off the main path. Yeah. And the biggest push for me was probably after I graduated from college, I moved back in with my parents, which was not on my radar at all. I will, I will admit that fully, you know, no, I was going to go get a big job. And I really started my awakening journey, um, probably like halfway through, I, through college, funny enough during COVID. And by the time I was ready to leave college, I felt like my whole world had shattered because I had kind of been in doctrine with these ideas of what it means to be part of a community, what it means to be supported. And it was just so phony to me. It didn't actually feel that way. And, you know, then this community is telling me what kind of jobs I need to do, the way that my resume needed to look, the way that all these specific things needed to be. And it just felt so unright to me. And I got kind of scared because I was like, I almost fell down that rabbit hole and just went along with it, um, did what they told me to do, worked where they wanted me to work. And it took me a while to really even go back into the world after that. And so when I did, I really wanted to share something that validated people's questionings in a way. Yeah. Like, is all a big mystery you know we don't <laughs> actually know like a lot of things as yeah. much as you know people in power want us to believe them because you know they know all these things and of course they do but knowing is a very personal thing the more that you tap into it you know things manifest differently for everybody and i really just want to hold the space where it's like you can allow your thoughts to manifest in a way that is unique to you and be empowered in that without having to feel the need to filter it in order to be welcome, be connected, be joined with somebody else. Well said. So I hope this is the question. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that was the question. <laughs> I think it did. I don't even remember what the original question was, to be honest with you. But <laughs> I think you said, <laughs> you said it right. The mainstream community if you even want to call it a community is a cult i thought about this recently i'm like this is a giant cult a worldwide cult of personality and you can either subscribe to that or you can subscribe to your own knowing like you said which is real knowing the knowing of the outside world is phony knowing it's a false knowing they're just delusions seriously they're just delusions of like um I don't even want to get into it too much, but it's just, it's phony and it's an illusion. It's the illusion of Maya, right? So you can either subscribe to that, live in delusion, you know, or you can go within and figure out what's real. And it seems you have uh, figured out what's real. You have awakened. So let's get into that one. Where did this all come from for you? How did you even get on this wavelength? Because I feel as though that is the hardest part, to be honest with you, is taking the red pill. And seeing through it, you know, <laughs> peeking behind the curtain and seeing Oz. So how did you even get to see this within yourself? And uh, yeah. 
That's the question. <laughs> I love that question. Um, and I would totally agree with you. I think that is really the hardest thing is like committing to, like you said, taking the red pill. What kind of happened to me is I was truly so disconnected from all of myself in every way, in the way that I was making decisions, like the people I was hanging out with, um, the way I was spending my time, everything was so whack. And I think that <laughs> definitely whack. Yeah, it's a good way to describe it. <laughs> and what really scared me too, when I first started, and you have to commit to the awakening, I think that's what is really important for everybody to understand. Even myself, I have to remind myself of that. Like you can't play the back and forth game. It just simply doesn't work like that, where it's like you're still holding the space for these, you know, matrix ideas, these indoctrined ideas while you're pursuing your true path. It, it's simply, you can't take both pills basically. Yeah, That can be very scary. And that's another reason I love having an openness with my ideas, like my stories is because yeah, you know, it just starts coming and it, you're like, oh, this can't be real, but it's like, that is way more real than anything we've been taught in a school building than anything that has been passed on to us. And so I'll get back on track with kind of how that happened for me. So again, I was in college. Um, life was just truly in shambles. I was in a mess of a relationship, just not just with a partner, with everybody, mm -hmm. even my and I felt really pulled towards my family, which was kind of out of character for me at that time. But I just wanted to be with them like all the time. They were like my safe haven. And so I came to a, a really big blockage where the person I was living with, we got into a heated argument. I was sick all the time. Like I literally thought I was dying. Basically, I was a hypochondriac. Um and I got into this argument with my roommate and that really put things into a crazy perspective for me. I don't know what was happening that day, but it all kind of culminated on this day. Funny enough, that culmination happened. I called my dad. I was like, please come get me. I need to come home. I packed up basically all of my stuff. And I kid you not, the next week COVID happened. I ended up never seeing a lot of those people again. Um, never went back to live in that apartment after I, and it, it was like, it had been, it's like my true voice was building and building and building. And it just exploded that night. And it was not kind. I was, I would say I was nasty, but it's like, that's what your authentic self. It's, it, it was a result of me pushing myself down so, so much time after time again. And when it finally felt like, okay, she's letting it out. It all came out. Like I just really exploded almost. And I also had to deal with, you know, the regret of that, the way that I felt that it was so out of character for me. I was very meek and mild and somewhat of a people pleaser at the time. And that culmination of things and just the fact that the universe conspired to, I never saw those people again. I never went to that back to that apartment that like, had me so down in the dumps. It was really wild. And from that, from there, I started just reading any texts that I could about spirituality and specifically the body was really, really where it kind of started for me. The fact that we can heal our own bodies. And like I was saying, I thought I was dying. Like I thought I had cancer. Like it was really crazy, but I did. I genuinely, and it was because I was so disconnected and that's really what a lot of things came back to for me. And the first two years of really, you know, exploring it, it was all exploratory. It wasn't so much I was physically acting out what was happening. It was like I was learning life all over again, reading, writing, watching content that Rebirth. was truly aligned. Yes, yes. And I think that was one of the most important parts of the journey because I wasn't trying to show anything. I wasn't trying to draw attention to myself. My attention was on life itself and it still is. And it's just amazing to have that shift from like such a personal perspective to more of like an overall life perspective and a collective perspective as well. So I did end up, you know, going back to college and my life was just completely different after 
that period of time and the reading, the writing, the everything. And after I graduated college, it was like I was educating myself on life. And I was I was there getting an education, which of course I did, but it was just a completely different way of engaging with the world. And that was my priority. Like in my room, I was going to the parks around town. I was going to coffee shops by myself. It I really changed in that period of time. And being in the same place was really empowering too. And so after I graduated college, that's when I was really able to start walking as myself again and a lot of inner child healing as well, especially going back and living with my family in, you know, a house that I was raised in that I spent a lot of time in as a teenager specifically. And we would still go to the same places I went to as a child. I mean, that healed me on an insane level. And I really think that that's what allowed me to step into a new form of empowerment in life and the ability to really act out how I'm feeling, be who I am and be how I am. And it really is a domino effect too. Mm. When somebody takes the responsibility of, you know, wanting to change the path, the trajectory um, and heal things in a family line, it it does start awakening things in the other family members as crazy and wild as that sounds it's absolutely beautiful and it's shared too it, you know it's not just one person does one thing it's just it really is a domino effect and it's like the dominoes stand back up on their own like they get knocked down but that they come back and then another domino falls and it's just kind of this beautiful dance that happens and being able to spend so much time with my family on my journey really helped me to solidify this true connection to my authentic self, who I really am, what I really desire, and what life is really about. Seeing, you know, the gentleness of all of that. And so the most important things on my kind of awakening that I would say looking back was was reading in terms of the beginning of the journey. Um, because when you really do this humongous paradigm shift, there's not much you can physically do. Like you can't go buy all these, you know, holistic health products or go buy like anything. And I got kind of sucked into that trap a little bit where I felt like I had to, you know, do these physical things before I started healing, but it's the complete opposite. It really is that internal dive, that initial dive in that you're going to feel it the most. And it's like that projects on way into the future. It's, it's really a beautiful thing because even now I'm like recalling some of the first initial kind of spiritual lessons I learned, which is crazy because I've had a lot of experience since then, but it just goes to show, you know, the equalness of everything that you do in this life. Mm. Yeah. You said something that I've never heard. Hmm, excuse me. It's the collective perspective. That's good. And from <laughs> the personal perspective to the collective perspective. <laughs> I don't know why I never thought about that one. It even rhymes. It's very good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, would you say that is, if not the biggest change, one of the biggest changes that come from the spiritual path is the egocentrism going into seeing that we're all in this together, that we all are each other in this together. You know, is that like the big difference, the big shift that you felt in your life is seeing that we are all different dominoes on the mat that are falling and rising together? You know what I'm getting at? Yeah, absolutely. And I can absolutely say that is definitely one of the top because that never stops playing out. You know, there's kind of certain lessons I feel that it's like once you absorb it, once you bring it into your field and you really get it into your subconscious, it kind of, it, it's kind of, that's it. That's there. You have that as a foundation. Yeah. That idea, it, it is constantly evolving because you're meeting new people. Mm. you experiencing different triggers um yeah things are coming up so it's really amazing to be able to realize that so yes i would say mm -hmm. that and that is a very that's a constant kind of learning thing it's it's 
it's constantly unfolding because you're seeing, oh my gosh, like I see myself in that. I see myself in that. And because yourself is something beyond your body, your personality, any of those things. Yeah, it's beyond the sense of concreteness. It's ever evolving. That's the beauty of it. The endless novelty of the true self with a capital S that we get to see and that unfolds for us every day, every moment with every new experience that goes by us. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It is ironic because there is the one revelation of I am everything. Everything is me. That is the self. But it doesn't quite end there. Like you said, it's paradoxically the same, but always changing in the revelation. And that's what's so beautiful about it. So even if we describe it here and say all is one, one is all like, yeah, that is that's just a platitude. That only goes so far because truly that that revelation is something that you take in your heart and you embody and you live that day to day. And that is the spiritual path. So step one, as I said before, right, is getting the glimpse into that. Step two, which is also not exactly easy, is with this dawning, this seeing that I am everybody, I... uh, See everybody as God and drag, as Ramda says, with this sense of seeing, this newfound sense of seeing, how am I going to embody that as Gary or as Shana, right? What do I do here as the actor? Even if the people don't know they're the one, that's the hard part, right? At least for me, how do I treat God and drag the other people that don't know that they're God and drag that may not have my best intentions at heart, right? That's the work. And that's the tests I feel like that come through. But that's what makes it worth it. I feel like that's what it's all about is being able to truly forgive others in the best ability that you can to see them as God and drag, no matter what the appearance is, right? No matter how different they look, or sound, or smell like no matter how different the person is or appears truly can you see through the appearance and see that they are just you looking at you that's the work so summing that up would you agree it's like a two-step process maybe an oversimplification as we get the glimpse and then we work with the glimpse you know the spiritual path is about being able to do the work to refine ourselves refine our Refine our ego in order to make it healthy, you could say, right? Is that really the work that you see unfolding for your life at this point? That's really powerful. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. (laughs) I would say yes. And a conclusion that I came to, I'm glad you brought up the ego because I think that it is a very relevant topic in terms of awakening and spirituality. And in my life, I've found that you cannot fully get rid of the ego. No, that's a fallacy. It is very much so. And I, I believe that people get sucked into this game. I got sucked into it a little bit where it's like, oh, well, I have, I, my ego's dead. Like the ego is a necessary part of the experience for exactly what you just said. We're all God and drag. We're all different versions of this same energetic flow and the ego is part of this human experience in order for us to maneuver through this 3d plane our ego has been so blown up even on a collective scale and we've fallen into this delusion in identifying with a minuscule part of our human experience we are so much more than what we can be and i love the word construct than this construct identity that has been given to us or that we've written for ourselves. So being able to have a healthy relationship with the ego, that's can that's what can really help you become truly actualized in your dream reality. As much as it's a beautiful idea that you know, we, we live without an ego. We only feel that way because we've defined the ego in such negative terms, which is understandable because a lot of, a lot of, uh, arguments, a lot of horrible things 
can go back to one's relationship with the ego, but we can't play that blame game either. We have to be willing to re-enter all the parts of self with this renewed perspective in order to heal, truly heal. And I do believe you, you can describe an ego death um, as, because it's a term that I've used before. And the way that I see it is that you're just taking power away from your ego. Mm. I like to see the ego as like a black bull, a really smooth black bull. And our energy are gold marbles. And in my life, I had the whole jar of marbles in the ego bowl. And what people, what we have collectively came to is that, oh, what we want to do is just shatter the bowl. No, we were given that bowl. And I also like to pretend like I'm very much into parables and stories and symbolisms too, to help kind of break these ideas down. I like to think of the bowl as a gift from God and kind of play with that in a way. Like it was a gift that was given to me when I was five years old that helped me to understand how I'm different, how I'm supposed to show up in this world. And it was a beautiful gift to me. Of course, you don't want to destroy that bowl if it has that backstory and you know all the things that it's meant to help you. What you need to do is you need to take some marbles out of the bowl. And when you take those marbles out of the bowl, it's going to hurt because you're going to have to admit that, oh, I need to be better than all these people in order to be validated. Nope, I'm going to heal that. So I'm going to put that in the original jar. And I feel insecure because of the way that somebody else looks comparatively to me. Mm -mm, that's not how we're going to work anymore. And you have to put those marbles back into the original bowl or into the original jar. And that jar is like a purifier. Like when we meditate, when we get into a yoga practice, when we journal, however that is for somebody, you have the opportunity to purify this energy in a way that is going to serve you now with a renewed sense of consciousness. And you can play a game with the bowl too. You can go round and round and, you know, your hand can hover the surface, but unless you actually grab some marbles out of that bowl and look at them and see what marbles they are, then you can put them in the jar and, and the universe does the work for you. It's just kind of like that action of taking the marbles and putting them in a different jar. Yeah. And something really important that you mentioned that I wanted to comment on is how you said that we are all other versions of self, but how do we, how are we to maneuver that with somebody that's so unaware of it? I think that is super important and treating everybody with the same level of love has been a lesson that has truly upgraded all of my life. When I was first kind of on my journey, I'll share a little personal story. Um, I kind of had this, a little bit of a spiritual ego, which is very dangerous. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, they're not, you know, on their journey. They're not interested in awakening. They're not, you know, trying to better themselves. And it's beautiful when you start awakening in consciousness and you realize, oh my gosh, why am I thinking this about other people? How dare I try to put myself on a pedestal because I'm doing what I'm meant to do? I don't know what, we don't know what other people's journeys look like. Of course, when we practice more, we can tap in in specific ways, but overall, we never know where somebody's supposed to be at a certain time. And being able to, you know, pull the veil on that and realize that that's not what it's about. That's kind of another part of this competitive ego game where we feel like everyone needs to be doing something a certain way. Everything looks a certain way. So I just think it's really beautiful to kind of ponder on that, that even though someone might be completely unaware of something, you treating them with that level of openness and accepted acceptedness is you don't know what that's going to trigger in them. You don't know what that's going to lead them into. So yeah. And it's just, it's constant healing as well. Just even telling that story, it made me feel sad because why would I do that? You know, I, I was just yeah. trying to make myself feel better. And I realized that feeling better never comes from anything outside of myself. It is always something within that shifts rather than some kind of external idea or person or validation. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. It's all within.
truly. It is, yes. We've all heard it before. It's a cliche, <laughs> but it's the truth. It's all within. All you got to do is go within, tap into oneself. And there is this subtle, very subtle intuition that leads the way. Subtle, yet very powerful as well. That will lead the way. Some say it's the higher self. Some say it's God. A lot of different names, but it's there. It's you. <laughs> and it's always, it's always there. It's always you, right? And it'll lead the way in this whole journey and how to actually embody this unconditional love for everyone else, for yourself and for everyone else. Do you feel that as well? Do you feel as though there is this intuitive guidance that just comes about from tapping in through meditation and yoga and the like? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's real, man. It is, it is real. And, it's, it, and it can be scary too. And I, I think that that's, it's okay to feel like, it's like life is like a self-run machine. And we're just kind of the vessels for it to move through. Yeah. And we carry all this stuff around and create blockages for that flow. It's almost like, you know, your life is working out so perfectly. You're like, what's going on? I feel like that's kind of a theme in movies. I've seen people like that. Like, oh, when is something going to go wrong? We create these biases and these self-sabotaging behaviors. But when we're truly tapping into our intuition, that's how it works. It's, it is unblocked it is natural it is honestly perfect mm -hmm. and the more we can get deeper with that it's absolutely stunning it's amazing yeah i like to say that the body is like a input output machine it may be a rather simple and rudimentary explanation but i'm a simple guy you know we input energy Sometimes it gets stuck and stagnant and it causes dis-ease. It causes distortion. So you have to work with that energy. And then thus, if you do work with it, work through it, it works through you, right? We, uh, we are like a membrane of energy that just runs through us and we hold it literally in our body. I think you mentioned this in the beginning and I didn't, um, I didn't touch upon that subject, but I think we can bring it up now how important it is to take care of the body in this whole journey. If you are unhealthy, if you are just struggling physically, it's going to be rather difficult to tap into this wavelength, right? I think step one, if not one, maybe two or three is to get relatively healthy. You don't have to be a health freak, but get relatively healthy where one is not focused upon the physical ailments of the body and you can actually find this sense of stillness without, you know, your back hurting or you have a headache or just the list goes on of stuff that could be um, affecting your body, which is actually like a sign and a symptom, but we can get into that after. But just point of the story is be able to have a foundation of health in one's life. And I think that will also be a solid foundation and serve as um, trajectory into this, right? Because a lot of people that I speak to, including myself, actually started along this path by trying to get physically sound, in shape, flexible through yoga, lifting weights, right? I think the journey in a certain way, not for everybody, but for a lot of people is just through self-improvement, but self as in the self that you think you are. And then eventually, if you stay on that self-improvement wavelength and that, uh, that journey, it may, you may come to find that the self is a lot greater than you originally thought, <laughs> right? <laughs> it doesn't just stop the exercise and uh, doing some yoga classes here and there. But point of my story is that it starts, I think, really with the body. You have to get in touch with being a conducive flow to this energy and then Thus, that just becomes part of your life. I think um, a healthy lifestyle isn't just like a fad or just like a diet you do. It's something that is a very, very pivotal part of the journey that I don't find a lot of people speak about online. I speak to a lot of people and not a lot of people, I'm not judging just from my observation, they don't 
stress the importance of being healthy. But I would say that being healthy is extremely, extremely important to be able to tap into this higher self, the higher guidance, being able to tap into God. You have to have that foundation of just being okay, <laughs> feeling okay, more than just in the mind, right? Just feeling okay just by existing. <laughs> and that comes in many different ways, right? Uh, but what would you recommend? What would you recommend in order to um, take care of the body and be healthy in that way? Do you have any regimen or practices? Sure. What I'm going to say first and foremost is understand the immense, immense connection between your mind, your body, and your soul. It's all one. It is all one. Yes. And there is really no way to get around that. Mm -hmm. uh, all you would do is you would, you would create an even greater imbalance in your life and that would manifest outward. You know, I love how you said, uh, you know, it's not just going to a couple yoga classes or doing this. Our brain has a very interesting way of accomplishing goals. And we're very head heavy in this society. You know, we want to know exactly what we need to do in order to get that exact outcome. But when you really are prioritizing your whole health, which is your mind, your body, your soul, you will be innately guided to certain things that will fulfill you in a way beyond, you know, losing a certain amount of weight, you know, getting rid of a certain ailment because you go beyond that. Of course, that still happens and you still are happy at that accomplishment, but you realize that something greater is happening to you. In terms of my practices, I am very intuitive with them. So I tried um, a couple years ago, you know, yoga every day, um, 30 minute practice at least. And I did it. It just was not working for me. And it was because on certain days, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go run around or go dance around or just stretch a little bit in bed. And when you put your body at the forefront, you are literally putting your body at the forefront, which means you're listening to your body. You are not telling your body what it needs to do in order to feel good. You're allowing your body to guide you into what it needs to feel good. Sometimes it's laying in the grass and it's so much more than few things that go into the health of your body. So what my, another big thing that I represent, re uh, recommend is just getting to know your body as silly as that sounds. I just really got to know my body within the last five years and Truly within the past two years, I can really say like, I get to know my body more and more every day. And it's because I listen to it. I get to know it. And that's the same with eating as well. Yeah. Intuitively eating. Um, and it doesn't mean, um, you know, trying to guess what it is that your body wants. Just, just being guided to certain things, certain sizes of things. I will be the first to say I have a wacky food schedule. I don't eat three meals a day. I don't um, do anything really crazy with my eating. And it's just like, if I feel like eating something, I'm going to eat something. If I feel drawn to a big meal, I'm going to make myself a big meal. When the mind gets too involved, it can really feel like a chore. It can really feel like Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this, that, oh, our mind is too much. It's that we have put too much on the mind. We have made our mind responsible for things that the mind has no control over. Yes, our mind and body are connected, but our body has its own unique system, just like the mind does. Intelligence and, and wisdom. Exactly. Yes. Body wisdom, body intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's something... <laughs> That's, you know, thrown in the mainstream. That's not something that's really hugely accessible to learn about. And I think I'm not saying that in, in, you know, a lack thereof standpoint. I'm saying that to empower us to realize that it's something we teach. We learn ourselves. We teach ourselves. And even with this information I'm kind of sharing, the most important thing is the way that you maneuver the relationship with your body. And... 
emotion is energy in motion. It is energy that moves through us. We learn, we gain wisdom through that energy coming to us from the divine, and then it returns back to its source. When we have a really stagnant, unconnected, disconnected body, that energy keeps coming, but it does not flow through. And I do believe that that causes a lot of dis-ease. Of course, we have, you know, the external things that we can blame for things. Somebody eats too much sugar, too much salt. Sure. At the root of a lot of those issues that we face is some kind of emotional baggage, even maybe emotional trauma. And being able to clear that is immensely powerful and you feel it in more than just your body. It's literally like a weight being lifted off. And it starts with the small things, just literally sitting with your body and feeling it. Mm -hmm. You can touch it. You can sit quietly with it. Even if it's literally 30 seconds, if you're just getting started with something, it is, it's so important to have that kind of divine triangle flowing in your life with your body, your mind, and your soul. And that's why um, we say, I got a bad gut feeling. That's that body intelligence. And it's really a culmination of a lot of different factors. And it's ironic too, because this is a great way I can articulate further on why we put too much pressure on the mind. The mind is very much a go-getter. It wants to have its hands in all these different bowls because it has this very important job to help us maneuver 3D reality, earth, you know, the thing, our senses. It's kind of like the home of our senses. And when we start putting more and more responsibility on our mind, it's like it is rapid firing way too much. And it doesn't help that we live in a very overstimulated environment or we have a lot of worry that we hold in our mind. And so I have experienced times in my mind where my mind is telling me, oh, this is a bad situation. You need to get out of this situation oh, that person is really creepy. You need to, you need to get away from here. And it was false signals. And what happens is when we aren't aware, we follow those false signals over and over and over again, these false ideas that are being born in our mind. That's why it's important to be connected to intuition. Our intuition knows what signals are true, knows what signals are real. And so Our intuition is never going to freak us out. That's a big key in understanding intuition. And we can connect this to taking care of the body. If you want to integrate it in with knowing what you should do for your body, it can cause a lot of anxiety. I have struggled with my body image um, and it is a really weird, weird thing to struggle with. It is not something that ever can really be explained. It's just about the relationship that one has with the way that they look, the way that they feel. And it is something that can be healed. So your intuition is going to tell you what you need to be doing. The mind might tell you, you need to stop eating. You need to um, edit the way that you look in pictures, you need to do all these kind of things. That's what the mind is saying because it wants a quick solution. Again, it's that go-getter. It accomplishes things really well for us. But sometimes we have to be willing to turn things over to our body and that innate wisdom. It's never going to shame us. It's never going to freak us out or force us to do anything that is going to hurt us. That has been the most beautiful thing I have learned about the intuition It sometimes leads us to make temporarily painful decisions, but they always lead us down a path that is pure, real, and most aligned. And just to handle that little initial pain, you will be thankful. You will be glad you did down the line. Yeah. Very well said. Thank you. It seems like the path alludes to figuring out what part of our being to listen to more popular paradigm is listen to the mind. It's all mind, all mind, very imbalanced. But coming into the spiritual path seems to be bringing a balance between the intuition, the inner guidance in the mind. Because like we said, the ego, the mind never goes away. It's just figuring out 
what's BS and what's real. It seems like the mind is rather immature. It seems like it's rather childish and the inner guidance, the gut intelligence, the heart intelligence is more grounded. It's more mature. It knows what's actually better for you in the moment. The mind is very survival instinct, fearing, just hesitant at um, risk, essentially hesitant at life altogether. It's very constricting. The inner wisdom is very expanding. It's the complete opposite. <laughs> it's very like, um, it's very connected to creativity and just flourishing and just a totally different lifestyle and way of living and seeing others, seeing yourself and seeing others. The ego is just, it seems like they're at odds with each other, right? They like they 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 fight. It's like this inner fights, this inner battle that we seem to have within us. Um, and the thing is, is we just got to bring a balance between that because the mind, I feel, is though also serves a purpose, right? There's something good about rationale and being able to have the thoughts that lead the way, well, maybe not lead the way that think they lead the way, but the thoughts that are there to just facilitate a regular life so we can do things in the world, right? The mind stuff never goes away. It just doesn't hold as much weight as it used to before. It's interesting. We're talking like, we're talking sort of dualistic and like different parts of our being like this is, and, and this is the mind, this is the intuition, but it really is one being that's the thing it's really like fusing that into one being and one embodiment it's just hard to put into words it does feel like two at some points though it's the devil and the angel on your shoulder <laughs> right <laughs> metaphor it's like that it's like what do i listen to here and it, it differs from moment to moment and circumstance to circumstance but ultimately it is one being it is you deep down i like to say the soul I don't know if this is correct or not. I heard this from some reading, somebody, somewhere. The soul isn't like this thing that we think of like a ghost, like an apparition. Like we think of soul as this like etheric and astral part of our being that is sort of disembodied. Not really. The soul, what you are past your body is the higher self and the ego in a healthy relationship. That is really what the soul is. It's like one relationship to embody in your and in your act of Gary or Shana or the listener. That might be a different way to look at the soul. It's the relationship, right? It's the Holy Spirit, you could say in a Christian sense, between the Father and the Son. Many different metaphors, but I see it as like a relationship between these two seeming parts of our being that come together to create harmony in the human experience. I, uh, I don't really know what else to say. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. You got to take care of all parts of our being. That's the thing is I think we start to realize that we are a multifaceted being. We have different layers. It's not just the body. It's not just the mind. It's not just our five senses. It goes pretty deep. <laughs> and I'm still figuring it out every day that goes yeah. by. But it goes rather deep, right? And um, I think that's what the path is all about, right? If we could summarize the whole thing the spiritual path you know if you even want to call it the spiritual path whatever it is it's just figuring out what we are who am i it's the question of all questions right who am i truly nobody knows there's eight billion of us on the planet nobody knows we may think we know right there may be a lot of narratives of who we are i'm american i'm gary I do this for a living. This is who I am. Look at me. That's not who we really are. Nobody has any idea, right? And I don't mean to scare anybody, but truly nobody has any idea what we are. But that is the beauty of it. Coming to find out. How do I put this? I was going to say coming to find out who you are. But the thing is, you never find out who you are. You only figure out that you I don't think I'm ever going to figure out who I am, right? And that's the only thing I can figure out. But that doesn't mean I give up the journey, right? There's some weird irony in there. It's almost like a joke. Do you feel that? Like, we are, we're, we're an unlimited being, truly, right? And we, we'll never figure it out. We'll never truly like get to a point like, oh, I got it. Yet, 
I feel as though I'm always trying to figure it out. I'm not even trying. It's just like natural. That's just like the natural effortless embodiment that comes from this, that who am I resonance, the I am that I am resonance is just naturally unfolding upon itself as time goes on, trying to, with this minuscule mind, fit some kind of caricature of who I am into it, right? As time goes on, as, uh, as, the, as the show goes on, I'm trying to figure out who I am. But I'll never really figure out who I am. That's the journey. The journey is the destination, another cliche, right? Yes. But um, yeah, do you feel that? Like it's every day, it's a new unfolding of who you are, but yet you'll never really figure out who you are. Absolutely. <laughs> and I feel like that's such like a deep kind of idea because it is, it's kind of freaky, you know, because you feel like you are, you're on this journey to figure out who you are. But exactly like you said, it's, you don't figure it out. You experience it. It's freaky to the mind. Yes, it is. Because the mind yeah. wants to say, this is who I am. It has some kind of label and narrative, but to really what we are, this multifaceted relationship, <laughs> this, this just sense of being, that is the miracle. <laughs> I find it so miraculous that we, we are the mystery. I was going to say we are living in the mystery. Not only that, is that we are this grand mystery that we may be created for ourselves. That's a whole another deep rabbit hole. But we are the mystery itself. And that's like so awe inspiring, you know? Yeah, it's so elusive. Mm. And it's something that cannot be put in a box, cannot ever be, you know, written out in a book. It's, uh -huh. it's truly, it is, it's a mystery and it's an, an amazing one to boot. And it's endless and it's expansive and it's constantly teaching us and allowing us to grow and bringing us closer to it. And it's kind of like this game where it's like it brings us closer, it brings us in, but you never touch it. Yep. You know, it's interesting you say it would never be written down in a book. A lot of people have tried, that's for sure. But I think the story is still being written. We are writing the script as we go. We're writing the script, all of us, right now. The book is being written right now. A lot of people think the book was written 2,000 years ago. It was called the Bible. Don't you understand? In one way... I could see that, but the Bible, they call it the living story. It's living on in a way. Like the Bible, this is part two. <laughs> this is the newer testament that we are all writing right now. It's beautiful. Like we're, I don't think, how do I put this? I'm kind of going off here. I don't know if people understand that what the sages were telling us of the past, whether you want to read the Bible, the Vedas, the Quran, all of what the sages are trying to tell us, this wavelength, this story, the Dharma, it's still going on. It wasn't like a story that happened 2,000 years ago and we revere those prophets of the past for what they gave us. Yeah, we can actually do that. But the point is, is that we become part of the Dharma. We become part of that story naturally just by going within. That just happens. But point is the story is still going on we're still writing this whole thing and i think on that note right so what is a story it's something you put on record for people for future generations to read to take in and hopefully translate into their life i think naturally when one gets on this wavelength of spiritual awakening you know universal consciousness what did you call it before it was collect the collective perspective i like that one once you kind of see that there is this obligatory giving back. And maybe it's just me, but other people have also said it as well. There is this obligatory giving back, a uh, translation of one's work to put on record that transcends one's bodily demise, one's temporary nature, right? And I think it's all through the word. I think the word lives on. And Jesus actually said that as well. You know, He said, I am the word. And if you want to find me, I'm paraphrasing. I apologize for the butchering, but if you want to, if you want to find me, listen to what I say. More of what I am is the word. It's not my body. So I think when one gets on this wavelength, you realize the power of the word and the power of putting the word into recording. And there is this obligatory giving back to future generations to hopefully be able to translate it 
for themselves so that they can thus pass it on like a torch, right? So yeah. how I started this whole thing is like you become part of the story. All of us, if you really, if you really are about it, if you're really about it, right? If you're really real in this recognition, I feel as though you have no other choice but to give back a little bit you got to give back a little bit just because all right so let me ask you this one do you feel as though you can't help but talk about this stuff right why you have a youtube channel why you create this community in the first place is because there's something in you that just wants to get out that wants to spread the word just a little bit like do you feel like Maybe obligation is the wrong word, but there is some sort of innate obligation that is within you that says, I got to spread the good word, right? Do you feel that? Absolutely. And I like to think about it as service. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I absolutely do feel that way. Yeah. We're all servants. I think that's what we come to find on this path is that how we embody the human experience in all of our own way is through servitude. We're all servants in one way or another to each other. We mm-hmm. serve ourselves first. That's the most important part. But then that self extends into serving the other selves. Yeah. The other human beings. What was that? I'm sorry. I just said they're very connected. The way that you serve yourself, treat yourself, the, and the way that you treat others. It's very yeah. correlated. And that's a beautiful thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Because you cheat the system. Like you can't treat yourself really, really well and then treat everybody around you really badly. Because what the reality is, then you are subconsciously treating yourself really, really bad. And being able to see that connection as within, so without, as above, so below, that truth runs in the way that we interact with each other on the planet. And it's amazing. It Mm. is when you be- begin like really diving into that, nothing is hidden. Everything really is in plain sight. And what you're looking to find, what you're seeking out is also seeking you. You're going to find it. And a quote that I like to think about is when you start, ch- when you decide to start chasing your dreams, be ready for them to begin chasing you. And it's the little decisions that we make that really do shift the whole trajectory. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's cool how you brought up the Bible too, because it's like, it's wild. It really is a crazy thing. And all these other books as well that, you know, just have been historically passed on through time. And again, what does all this mean? It's like, I don't know. I don't really think anybody really, really knows, but we all are able to find a balance with that mystery in our own way that's it we're all our own buddha we're all our own jesus christ that's what they were trying to tell us yeah the bible all the scripture doesn't matter what it is all the scripture is for us for you it's literally like it's it's for you the book was written by you and for you if it's not if it's not alluding to that then it's not worthwhile to read in my opinion but if you know how to look at it like that all the scripture, every story. I mean, you can look at everything like that. If you know how to look at everything like that, it just makes more sense. It just makes way more sense, more than just rationale, more than just on like some kind of surface level. If you can see everything, which I think comes along on the path, if you can see everything is for you in this very moment, no matter what's happening, it turns into how is this translated for me and my greater good, my greater growth? I think that's the big switch. That's the huge, huge difference that one is bestowed. Why is this happening to me to how is this happening for me? That's a cliche again. I say it a lot, but that is truly the big, one of the big things to come from the perspective shift is everything is for you. And that's a, that's, that's, that one's a little trippy. I had that during a psychedelic experience and I saw how everything was being made in the moment, like as I thought it. And it's very trippy and it's actually rather scary, but it is the truth. It's scary to the mind. 
scary to the mind because the mind's like, well, it's a, well, what? it tries to like figure it out and try to create concreteness. But if you're creating it as you go, there's no concreteness. It's all fluid. You're literally creating the dream as you go. And it's being created, like you said, as above, so below. It's created simultaneously on the outside as it is on the inside. That's trippy. The mind definitely can't, it can't compute that. So it's, yeah. <laughs> right? it's, it's the truth and it's a hard pill to swallow, but I really do feel that that is, um, that is a powerful changing of perspective that comes from this thing is that we really are the creators of this entire dream, this journey, every moment, every second, every day of your life, you're creating this as you go and that is pretty cool <laughs> i say right? yes yes it was amazing. unfathomable unfathomable this is a lucid dream <laughs> truly this is the dream of dreams we're all doing it together and i'm not saying i'm always on that wavelength right i'm not perfect I'm not <laughs> but i think what'd you say i just said right oh I yeah <laughs> I'm definitely not perfect. I'm not going to even try to portray myself as always being on that wavelength. I feel it now because we're we're tapped in, we're diving into this. But I think with enough refinement, that's where the path takes us, is being able to see and feel and truly know that we're creating this whole thing. We have so much power at our disposal. Um, but work in progress. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, it really is. Yeah. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you know what? I think that's a good note to wrap this up at. Do you have anything else you want to say or you want to keep it at that? Um, I will. You just inspired me. One last thought is just immense responsibility we have in our own lives. And that can be like a slippery slope, too, because... Sometimes we take on too much responsibility for our loved ones or certain situations, but all in all, when we can realize the immenseness and the minusculeness that that fluctuates between having that responsibility, it is, it's, it's so amazing to be able to have a hand in something so powerfully elusive and so powerfully perfect, not us, not anything outside, but the way that life flows, that is that is ultimately what is perfect. Mm. And I do, I believe that I have had a change in the word perfect. You know, we have this definition of perfect, you know, nothing is perfect. And like you said, how you're co-creating, you're seeing it happen inside and outside. It is, it's just absolutely amazing. And yeah, that'll be, that'll be my last little blurb. I'm super thankful for this conversation. Just really grateful. Same. I'm thankful for you. It's an honor for me to come on here and speak to you. Hopefully I made a little bit of sense. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I know you made sense. So yeah. Thank you for coming on here. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. You are absolutely welcome. Of course. Appreciate you. Um, keep doing your thing. Keep sharing your wisdom and that's it. I wish you all the best. Peace and love. Thank you. And peace and love to the listener. That's yeah. It. We're, we're all going to make it. <laughs> we're all gonna make it we have made it that's the thing it's have the idea we have made it whatever that means to you that's it it starts peace and love